Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from Telema Press. Gnostic Radio broadcasts free lectures from the Gnostic tradition of Samael on Vior. Each lecture explores another aspect of this timeless and sacred knowledge. Many of these lectures are supported by additional materials available on our website. Each Saturday, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live. The live lecture is accompanied by an anonymous chat session allowing listeners to read additional explanations related to the lecture and providing an opportunity to ask questions of the speaker. All of the efforts of Telema Press, including this lecture, are made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Help us to help humanity by making a donation. Telema Press is a non-profit corporation. Donations are tax deductible. For more information, visit our website at GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Scorpio. Following the sequence of lectures on uh, astrology, today we are entering into the house of Scorpio, which is ruled by Samael and by Pluto, Hades, the lord of practical magic. Scorpio is the sign that rules the sexual organs. And of course, it encloses a marvelous knowledge since it is directly related with the ninth sphere. The ninth sphere in the tree of life, which is a uh, yes, sod foundation. So as you see here, or if you have the tree of life in your home, you have to see the nine sphere, which is in the very bottom, before Malkut, which is a physical world. So Yesod is called the door. Whether for the inferior dimensions or to the superior dimensions. And here, precisely, we find the meaning. Why in Kabbalah it is stated that Samael is that archangel related with the tree of knowledge. And why Hades, Pluto, is also related with it. And of course, I repeat, Scorpio is related with Pluto and Samael. Samael is the fifth, as we know, archangel, the fifth spirit among the seven. 
which are related with the law of the Epta Paraparshinok, the law that organizes. When we observe the solar system, we find that the nine uh, sephiroth that we find here are related with the different planets which rotates or rotate around the sun, being Neptune, the ninth. And you know that Neptune is related with Keter, the first Sephira. Nonetheless, it, does, it is also related with the Assad. Because Yesod, counting from the top to the bottom, is the ninth. But it is important and it is uh, good to imagine now the solar system. Because you know that beyond Neptune, we found Pluto. Which in this uh, precise moment, the astrologers or better say astronomers of the planet Earth are saying that uh, it's just a secondary planet. According to their statements, it is not a planet. But in Gnosticism, we know very well that uh, Pluto is a planet and rules all the infra dimensions or inferior forces related with every single planet. That's why when you go and study the tree of life, you find that the very bottom of the tree of life, as you know, is Klipoth. And Klipoth is related with the nine spheres, the shadow of the tree of life. Klipoth is what in religion is called hell, inferno, Hades. And precisely, Master Jesus in the Gospels, as well in many other scriptures which are not in the Bible, mentions Hades. And the whole purpose of uh, the work that we had to perform, which is the self-realization of the being, is to defeat death and Hades. Of course, this is precisely the profound mystery, profound knowledge, wisdom, related with the sign of Scorpio. In... Uh, Greek mythology, we find the myths related with Pluto, with Hades, and with uh, Persephone. And uh, the, the, the Demeter, the mother of Persephone. Persephone is also called Proserpine the queen of hell. And the meter sometimes, or the meter sometimes is related with Rhea or with Isis. Different names. It is, of course, uh, as we explained in the previous lecture of Virgo, when we were explaining about the divine mother or the feminine aspect of uh, the creative forces of the universe. So the Divine Mother, as you know, is represented in many religions with the different virgins or female adepts that achieve the self-realization. Because the different uh, virgins uh, uh, that we find in different religions are uh, just uh, female initiates that achieve the self-realization and that, that's why they're... Uh, have the honor to represent that which has no form, which is the Divine Mother. And uh, 
The second aspect of the Divine Mother, as we were explaining in the lecture related with Virgo, with the Virgin, is Mother Nature. And precisely here in the myth related with Pluto and Demeter, the goddess of the earth, or the goddess, as you said, of harvesting, which is uh, celebrated or was celebrated in ancient times in the mysteries of uh, Eleusis, the Eleusinian mysteries. Beautiful celebrations and rites which in the ancient times where people were celebrating the lesser mysteries or the initiation into the lesser mysteries and the initiation into the greater mysteries in the Eleusinian mysteries of Greece. Of course, a beautiful Gnostic knowledge which is hidden and covering a lot of uh, secrets that in this day and age we are unveiling and delivering because these mysteries of uh, Demeter and Persephone were hidden for the public and it was prohibited to talk about but since 19, 19, uh, 1919 the White Lodge gave permission to explain all the mysteries for the sake of this suffering humanity which is always uh, thirsty of knowledge hungry for the wisdom and uh, of course, the Leusinian mysteries hide the mystery of the soul. We know that Proserpine, or Persephone, is the queen of hell, an aspect of the Divine Mother. But also it represents the soul. The soul that emerges from Olympia, Olympus, which is nothing that the superior dimensions, because in Greek mythology, Olympus is precisely here where we see all the higher sephirot of the tree of life, where all the gods abide, attributes, forces that we need to develop. But only in Greek mythology is where we find that there is also a god in charge of hell, and is divine. It is not evil like in Christianity or, or other religions. And is precisely Hades, Pluto, which is in charge of hell, but he is a god from Olympus. It's a divine god. And when we see this, we discover a great mystery that really uh, Pluto is related with what in esotericism we call the infernal gods. Do you hear about the infernal gods? Of course, it is uh, important to emphasize this because we are not talking about demons. We know that in Klippoth we find all those demons, the Black Lodge. But also in Klippoth we find the infernal gods. It's what in Buddhism is called bodhisattvas of compassion. Nirmanakayas who renounce Olympus, who renounce Nirvana, the happiness there, and decide to enter into Klippoth in order to help the lost souls. This is called the infernal gods. Jesus of Nazareth is an infernal god. Krishna those infernal gods are precisely severe and very, how do you call, uh, mysterious, unusual. They behave in different ways. They don't behave like the gods of Nirvana, or the gods of Olympus. 
Because they had to always overcome certain tasks. If you realize the great heroes in different religions, you find, for instance, to begin with Jesus, that it is stated that before resurrection, he descended into hell. And he liberated many souls, the soul of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and many other prophets, to resurrect them, to take them out of Hades. This is how it is written. But when you inquire in Greek mythology, you find there are many heroes that did that. That went to hell, for instance, Perseus, and cut the head of Medusa, and go back as a hero. Hercules did many tasks in hell, took Cerberus from hell. And uh, really, this is a mystery of initiation, which was hidden in different stories. The initiates, the ancient Gnostics, left that in order for us to use it as a guidance for our own particular work. To begin, as I, I said in the beginning, Persephone is also the symbol of the soul. She's innocent. Why? Because as you know, the embryo of soul, the Buddha, descends from heaven, from Olympus. And he's part of Jupiter. Who is Jupiter? Jupiter is the innermost. Because Zeus. Each one of us has his own particular individual Zeus. Or Jupiter. And as a soul. We are here in the earth. In order to become really completely a son of Zeus. If we achieve the self-realization, if we work in this great uh, work of the self-realization of the being, which is written in different religions, different ways. So that soul, which is us, because this is what we are, call it consciousness, soul, essence, we descend from the stars, detach, a part detached from the spirit. That spirit uh, in Kabbalah is called Jehovah, the Tao, Jupiter, in this sense, in this Greek mythology. And uh, entered, as we explained in other lectures, through the doors of Yesod into the planet Earth. We explained that Yesod is related with the sexual organs. That's why I said Yesod is the door to enter into the earth. And of course, we enter into this physical world through the doors of sex. Our father, our mother, in Yesod, Perform the sexual act. One sperm came from the sexual glands of our father and entered into the womb of our mother. Nine months endured that sperm in order to develop. And of course, this is how in the Leucinian mystery says that this is how the soul dies. What we call birth here is a, is a death for the soul. Because the soul in heaven is free. Enjoys all the attributes of God. But when entering into this tomb, into this sarcophagus, coffin, called physical body, we become dead. That's why Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Because in this uh, myth 
of uh, Pluto with Persephone is written beautifully all the symbol of this. So that Persephone which we said is the symbol of the soul enters into mother nature through the door of Yesod. So in this, in this case mother nature becomes our mother. And she creates for us what we call the protoplasmatic bodies. In the law of evolution. These protoplasmatic bodies are very simple. In the mineral kingdom. Which they start developing. But we know that uh, the divine mother nature. Which gives this protoplasmatic bodies free to every soul that enters into the world. Take care of all the souls. It is how Persephone is always uh, the spoiled child of Demeter, the divine mother. And she takes that soul from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom to the animal kingdom and finally to the level of the intellectual animal kingdom. So the soul enjoys all of this evolving process next to the Divine Mother, Mother Nature. That's why in other, in other ways we say that the elementals of nature enjoy Eden. And the Divine Mother Nature takes care of them. But something happened, unfortunately. When we enter into the intellectual level, then the intellect starts identifying Coming to identify with nature. That symbolize when Persephone is going to cut flowers. It's cutting Narcissus, one of them. You know, Narcissus is precisely that uh, symbol also. You know, we call the people narcissists, where they identify with themselves. Or we will say it with the beauty of nature. Unfortunately, we become identified with the beauties of nature and we forgot our own divine origin, a superior origin. And we start identifying with it so much that all of a sudden, the earth opens and Pluto appears and rapes, abducts Persephone. And take her to hell to become his queen. That's devolution. Or the way in which we start, of course, being identified with the laws of devolution, which are in charge, of course, of Pluto. Because Pluto, Hades, is that intelligence or the physical body. If you observe the physical body, there's a lot of knowledge, intelligence. But we are not aware of it. The digestive system, the respiratory system, circulatory system. And when we investigate the physical body really, all of its functions, we become amazed to see how Wonderful, this physical organism is. And uh, scientists in this day and age amazed when they study the physical body. But they ignore too many things of the physical body. The physical body is capable of doing many things that this present science ignores. And it's because the duty of the soul here in this physical world is to acquire cognizance, cognizance of the physical body, of all his functions. 
But that is not easy. Because within the physical body, we have the subconsciousness, unconsciousness, infra-consciousness, aspects of Hades, which everybody now has uh, active. It is stated in that myth that uh, in one part of the year, Persephone is liberated and goes to, with his mother to Olympus. But part of the year is in hell with Hades. That is a symbol, of course, of the physical death. It's the lower symbol of the physical death. When we die physically, then the soul finishes of being in this jail. In this uh, dungeon which we live, which is the physical body. And it's free. And enjoys certain time there in heaven, in Olympus, in order for to return again later into a new body and to be again uh, in the kingdom of Hades. So we have to understand and comprehend this. In the level in which we are, which is the intellectual humanoid, we belong to the kingdom of Hades. Once in a while, people enjoy certain vacations after death, physical death, into Olympus, into heaven, to paradise, into nirvana, for a while. But then they have to return again, because the duty of every soul is to conquer Hades. To be aware of those forces. And that's why in Gnosticism we always say emphasize that the door of hell is Yasod. The door of Eden is also Yasod. And when we talk about initiation, we talk about Yasod. Because in order to enter into the initiation, you have to study the ninth sephira. No one can receive any type of initiation if this person is ignoring the mysteries of Yesod, which are related with Scorpio. That's why in the Leucinian mysteries, those that knew about the mysteries of Yesod were entering into the world of Hades. And that's why it is symbolized that uh, through the nine initiations of lesser mysteries. In which little by little, the initiate was entering into the inner layers of the earth until reaching the ninth sphere. Dante Alighieri, the poet, great master that wrote the Divine Comedy, Explains the same thing. He enters into the door of hell and goes down to the ninth sphere. And while he's going down, he's describing the different types of powers of Hades, which different souls are slaves of. But the, the initial has to conquer because every single personage. And the divine comedy symbolizes in Hades something negative that we have to conquer. And Virgilius, the master of Dante, describing with him all of this is beautiful. The book, the divine comedy is beautiful, described how first we had to develop the nine initiations of minor mysteries. But for that, the initial has to be in chastity. Whether he is uh, married or is single. If he is single, he has to take care of his sexual energy. 
Because if the individual is fornicating, and then he is, of course, being a slave of the forces of uh, hell. Because fornication is one of the entrances. I mean, the entrance into Hades as a failure is through three uh, aspects of the soul, which is the, the fallen soul, which is lust, greed, and pride. Lust, of course, has its roots in fornication. <coughs> fornication. We know that fornication is what uh, the animals perform. Anybody that reaches the spasm or the sexual orgasm spills the sexual energy, that is fornication. So everybody is a fornicator. That's why we live in Hades. Because fornication and adultery is common in Hades, not in heaven. Of course, that's why the great messengers that became infernal gods came in order to teach the rules of above to the fornicators of the earth in order to change their behavior. And then for that they had to enter into the initiation to take care of their sexual energy and study their psychology. And since the protoplasmatic bodies that were serving in evolution to the soul close to the Divine Mother now is turning into devolution and Demeter loses her daughter. This is what mythology says. She's desperate, looking for her daughter because Pluto abducted her. Is now down there. And this is precisely in the way in which we are. We forgot about our Divine Mother. We have too many lives in different physical bodies that we forgot our divine origin. We forgot that our divine mother is waiting, but is inside of us. But she turns now into proserpine, Persephone also. Because that one of the aspects of the divine mother, which is in hell, the queen of hell. We need to go out with our Divine Mother. But with the permission of Hades, we had to defeat the subconscious, infraconscious. We had to conquer the body. Because Hades is the intelligence of the physical body. That intelligence that is instinctual. But what we need to transform into intuition. That's why it is written that Demeter was looking for Persephone with two lights, two flames, two torches. One is called intuition, and the other, objective reasoning. This is how the Leucinian mysteries tell us. This is how she was looking for it and finally she found Persephone. Of course, after she found Persephone, she uh, founded the Leucinian mysteries and Eleusis. But because all of that is related precisely with initiation, how to conquer that. It is written that those people that are married and practice sexual magic, they enter into the nine minor mysteries very fast. Remember that the one that receives initiations is the innermost, the spirit. Never the physical personality here. Because the physical personality that we have has to be conquered. 
The physical body has to be conquered. And all the infra forces within, which are beneath the physical body, has to be conquered. That's why Hades is very sly of the intelligence of nature. When somebody declares that he is a master, and boasting about his mastery, he is saying that Hades is having him or her in his hand. Because the personality that boasts about being a master belongs to Hades. That's why it's very difficult to achieve mastery. Because the ego, the different elements that we have within, are always related with uh, different aspects. Pride, for instance, as we said, that is one of the doors to go into Hades. Pride is one of the elements which is very heavy in every one of us. Pride is precisely that element that always looks for the way in order to go up, to show himself, to boast that he is being wise or better than anybody. And his hate is, of course, the force of hate is working through that person or through that initiate. That's why it is uh, written that it is very difficult for somebody to reach self-realization. Because that implies to leave the kingdom of Hades. It implies that Persephone has to go out from, from hell to be free, to resurrect, in other words. Of course, this dissension into hell, which is described here by the rape of Persephone, by Pluto, is represented also in Christianity, by the dissension of Jesus Christ into hell after his crucifixion, after his trial. You see, the trial of Jesus is nothing but the initiation in order to enter into hell, in order to defeat Hades. Because after that, he is crucified, and you know that the cross is a symbol of a sexual act. The vertical being represents the male, and the horizontal is the female. Both the cross symbolize man and woman performing the sexual act. And this is how the initiate develops that. And this is the symbol of Scorpio. Of course, you will say, well, everybody performs the sexual act, so everybody is in initiate. No, of course. We're talking about here, about Maituna, Tantra, sexual magic, in which you perform the cross, but you don't reach the orgasm, the spasm. That is called transmutation. This is called the Arcanum AZF, the Great Arcanum, the Ark of Noah, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of Science. You enter with all of your animals in the Ark of Noah. To do the work in the waters of life. And you know that the waters of Genesis are this related with Yesod. As we said in many lectures. People when they read mythology. Whether it's Greek mythology, Hebrew mythology. Or any type of mythology. They take the letter uh, 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 face, val face value. And it's wrong. Because behind the story is hidden the meaning, the guidance. In this day and age, there's a lot of people that interpret the Bible and many other scriptures, like in this case, the Greek mythology of the dead letter, and they don't know the meaning of it. There's a thing that is related with celebrations of the past, because the great priests, in order to teach this, mysteries of Eleusis, or the Eleusinian mysteries, they were uh, related this with the seasons of the year. Winter, of course, they said, is when Hades were taking the life of the earth. And in the spring is when Persephone was again uh, uh, going back with his mother and Demeter was giving life to the whole planet again. So this one was one of the symbols of uh, the rape of Persephone. 
that we study here. But of course, we take that from the internal point of view. Because every myth, every story has to apply to yourself. In order to understand what is what you have to do. In order to develop. So, it's coming into my mind as well. This uh, uh, myth about uh, Orpheus and his Eurydice. And when he descends also into hell. And only to liberate Eurydice. Of course, it is written that Orpheus was the son of uh, Apollo. And the muse of music. Calliope, which is a symbol, of course, of the divine forces of Olympus. And Orpheus is the wisdom that we had to develop by playing the lyre, which is related with the spinal column. Here is precisely when we have to understand that first we enter into the lesser mysteries. And then into the major mysteries. When we reach the very center of the earth, we find precisely the ninth sphere, Yesod, and all the power, which in Christianity is called Lucifer. The angel of the abyss, says the book of Revelation, which is death, destruction for the common souls, but which the initiate utilizes in order to climb to the major mysteries. These major mysteries is also related, they say, with nine uh, initiations, which we have to study carefully in order to comprehend the mysteries of Scorpio. Master Jesus, in the Gospels, when he talks to Nicodemus, he says to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I said unto you, that it is necessary to be born again, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus was a rabbi, which means a master at that time, of Kabbalah. He knew about the tree of life. He knew about the wisdom of the prophets. He was studying the Torah like any other uh, Hebrew at that time. But he didn't know about the mystery of being born again. Because of course, like in Judaism, in Christianity, in many other religions, they always celebrate the baptism as a symbol of being born again. There are many people in this day and age that they say that they are twice born. That they achieve the second birth. Just by believing in something or by receiving the baptism in any religion. But we know very well the mysteries of Scorpio tell us that baptism to be born again is related with the sexual force. Sexual magic is called. But Nicodemus in the gospel says, How can an old man be born again? Can he enter into the, his mother's womb again and to be born again? And Master Jesus wonders and is amazed that Nicodemus didn't know about it. And this is precisely how we the Gnostics wonder. 
that there are many people in this day and age that call themselves Christians of different denominations that preach in the TV, in the radio, and they have many thousands, millions of followers, and that they know the Bible, they study the Bible, but they don't know about this mystery. They think that to be born again is just to believe in what is written, or to believe in the personality of Jesus. But it's not to be born again, it's not to believe in the personality of Jesus. Is to study the doctrine and to practice the doctrine that Jesus taught to his 70 disciples in secrecy. Because he was talking in parables to the public and to his disciples in secret. And this is a mystery. That's why he answered to Nicodemus with a mystery. He said, It is necessary to be born by the water and the spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's a very Kabbalistic, alchemistic answer. To be born by the water and the spirit. If you don't know about alchemy, if you don't know about the mysteries of the Assad, the mysteries of Scorpio, you will think that he is telling him, you have to be baptized, as I was baptized in the Jordan, without knowing that it's a mystery, it's a symbol. To begin... We go back into the very beginning of uh, Judaism. And we study the book Bereshith, which is a word, a Hebrew word, which is translated into, into English as Genesis. The book of Genesis states very clear that in the beginning... The Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. What waters is talking in the book of Genesis? The waters of the sea, the waters of the river Jordan, the waters of a lake. What waters? In alchemy, in Gnosticism, we know that the book of Genesis, which is a book of alchemy, is a Gnostic book written by Gnostics ancient times Moses described there and says clearly that in the beginning the spirit of God the Ruach Elohim was moving upon the face of the waters of course God creates the creative waters are the waters of sexuality which are called Zimen and which is developed in the sexual organs of the female as well as the sexual organs of the male. The male has male semen and the female female semen. The spirit of God called sperm floats in the male waters and the ovum floats in the female waters. So that is the spirit of the energy, we will say. Because when we study the sperm and the ovum, we discover the atomic force which is there moving, the life of those uh, gametes are precisely the spirit of God, the force of creation. Which not only we have it, but which is also a fluid, a force in the animals, in the plants, in the minerals is everywhere. Magnetism, electricity, that's precisely that spirit, Ruach Elohim, that we find in all the kingdoms of nature. But the only individual that can take advantage of that spirit, that fluid, that energy, is the intellectual animal. Because you need to reason. You need to develop intuition. In order to take advantage of that. This is how you enter practically. Into the major mysteries. And start being born again. 
being born again because we are already physically born. But we are dead to the superior worlds. So therefore we have to be born again in order to enter into the superior worlds. And that is an action of transmutation of the sexual spirit of God which palpitates with throbs in our sexual glands. This is precisely what we know that the waters are those is the semen itself that element that we have in our sexual glands and that for the spirit of God is there. So we need to be born again by the water and the spirit. Master Jesus of Nazareth didn't say in that that in order to be born again you have to believe. He says you have to be born by the water and the spirit. But unfortunately, all the people in this uh, world that follow Christianity or Judaism ignore that any type of water is a symbol of the creative energy, sexual energy. Because we came here in this physical world because of that water. That's the door into the physical world. If it wasn't for that water of sexuality, we wouldn't be here. As well, the process in order to enter into the superior worlds is a birth. Why? We say we came from there, but now in order to enter, to return there, we had to dress with the wedding garment of the soul. Because the protoplasmic bodies, as we were explaining in the beginning, that Mother Nature gave us, is uh, they are bodies which are related, submitted to the laws of nature. Evolution and devolution. Evolution and devolution. So first, we are in the hands of Mother Nature, enjoying life in evolution, as elementals of the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom. But when we enter into the level of intellectual animal kingdom, all of a sudden, the earth opens and Pluto, the king of hell, pulls us down. Because those protoplasmatic bodies have to die. This is what they they call the second death in the book of Revelation. They have to be disintegrated. Because in nature, this is a law. It's not like people think a condemnation. No. This is just a law. Physically, we were born, or we started, as you know, as sperm. Then the, the fetuses were developed in the womb of our mother. Then that fetus came out of the womb of our mother, started growing up, young, adult, and started devolving. And eventually, the physical body that we have is not eternal. You know that. Because it's submitted to the laws of this world of Malkut. The world of Malkut has two laws. It's called the will of Zanzara. Evolution, devolution, evolution, devolution. So, our physical body will devolve, will decay, will die. We know that. But not only those bodies die but also the protoplasmic bodies that are those bodies related with emotions, with thoughts. Because when we talk about material bodies, mechanical bodies submitted to the laws of evolution and devolution, we think only the physical body. Because the present science, which has studied the dogma, this is the dogma of evolution, because present science make of evolution a dogma. They don't know that it's just the twin sister of the other law, which is devolution. If you have to be complete, we have to study both laws. But just to make of evolution a dogma is absurd. So we have, of course, to know that the protoplasmic bodies that we talk here are those bodies related 
with emotions and thoughts. When you go and you are physically tired, you start yawning, you go to bed, physically. And then happens that which commonly is called astral projection. You go out of your physical body in order for the body to rest. Because if you will stay inside your body and you won't sleep, I mean the physical body won't sleep, and then will you have insomnia. You, need, you know that the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body, needs to charge the physical body during the night in order for us to be okay again into our sarcophagus, into our tomb called physical body, and to come to the lecture, go to the job, or to do whatever we do physically. But during that moment when we are out of the body, we are handling the dimension of dreams. Or we are in the dimension of dreams with the protoplasmic bodies. That's why we keep thinking and feeling there. The protoplasmic bodies are matter as well. But molecular and atomic matter. It's not like this physical matter. It's called cellular you see, in order for you to understand, let me explain. An atom makes a molecule, a molecule, a cell, a cell, an organ. And a compound of organs is called organism. This is our physical body, called physical organism. But the organs are made of cells. But the protoplasmic bodies are also bodies with organs. Given by nature, in the same way that we receive the physical body free, the same way we receive the protoplasmic matter free too. But they are submitted to other laws. They have atoms which, mo which make molecules, and those molecules make organs. And those organs make organisms. You see? So those organisms are molecular organisms, not cellular. That's why they are submitted to other laws. So when we sleep, we go out of the body and we are there in the dimension of dreams with those bodies. That's why we think that we are in the physical world. But those protoplasmic bodies also have to die. They are submitted to other lasts. They were growing from the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom. And now that we are in this level of intellectual animal kingdom they start decaying, devolving as the physical body devolves, but because they are submitted to other laws, to other dimensions, their dissension, their decay, their devolution is longer. It's called eternal. It's not that people think that eternity is a time without end. No. Eternity has a beginning and an ending. As here in this physical world, we have a beginning and an ending. So eternity is that's why. It's not like a never-ending time. So when we die, when the second death, the talk book of Revelation, is a dissension into the world of Hades in order to devolve, in order for those bodies to decay and to finally disintegrate. That's, that's natural. And we are, unfortunately, submitted to these two laws. And that's precisely what the superior beings want us to learn. What that physical body that we receive here, and the protoplasmic bodies that we have within, that we manifest in the other dimensions, are mechanical, are called lunar. And we have no future, you see, within or with them. So we need to be born again. Meaning, we have to build organisms that will be submitted not to the mechanicity of nature, but to the laws of heaven, to the laws of the sephiroth, superior sephiroth. And this is precisely what Master Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus. Your physical body is mechanical, will die. Your internal bodies are mechanical, will die. So you need to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven with those protoplasmic bodies, with those physical bodies. 
because that matter belongs to this mechanicity of nature. There is another nature here which is superior. It's called solar nature. Whose bodies are submitted to other laws. It's called immortal bodies. And this is precisely what was hidden in the mysteries of Eleusis with the myth of Pluto, Persephone, and Demeter. And in the myth of other great heroes in which in order to build those bodies they need to destroy the elements which belong to Hades. You find, for instance, when you talk about anger, pride, gluttony, greed, envy, etc., all of those defects that we have within in abundance, all the people have, we call it uh, psychological aggregates, protoplasmic elements that are created mechanically. Because if you observe, it was built, was made mechanically. That's why I say that we are children of fornication. In, a, in, a class, in a ecclesi, ecclesi, Ecclesiasticus, one of the books of the Bible states there. That present human beings, or called human beings for respect, but these intellectual animals, have no difference with the beast. The way that they are born, they are born as well. The way that they eat, they eat as well. The way that they die, they die as well. There's no difference. Because we have bodies that belong to, to, to nature. So the only way to enter into the kingdom of heaven is by to being born again. And of course, for that... We need to receive the doctrine, the mysteries. And that's why it is written there in the Eleusinian mysteries of Scorpio that in order to enter into the major mysteries, first you have to pass through the nine minor mysteries. And to know about yourself, about, to know about this, what we, we're talking here. Because your consciousness has to realize that. That belongs to Hades. It's not as many people think. That we are going to fall into hell. That we are going to go to hell. No, no. We are in hell. That's, the, that's precisely the truth. To realize that. To comprehend that. That we live in hell. Is the beginning in order to leave hell. The people think that they will fall. No. We are already there. But why? Say, we have to explain this very, very clear in order for you to understand. The great law gave us 108 physical bodies of intellectual humanoids. In order to give us the opportunity to be born again. In other words, as the myth of Pluto explains, Persephone goes up out of hell or limbo in this way when we have the physical body. That's the other symbol. And here with the physical body, we have all the elements that we need because the physical body is like a great laboratory. Many people in the Middle Ages were looking for the laboratory of the great alchemists. Of course, they have some laboratories there physically in order to make their experiments. But they ignore that the great laboratory of the great alchemist is called physical body. This is it. You don't need to look out because you have it already. But every alchemist needs an atanor in order to work in his laboratory. In other words, needs the female aspect 
or if he is female, he needs the masculine aspect of that physical body. Because your physical body, being male, has only the masculine forces. You need the feminine as well. And that is called the Holy Grail, the retorta of alchemy, or as in mythology called, the flaming forge of Vulcan. When men and women are in the sexual act, they are in the flaming forge of Vulcan. And then their Vulcan, which is the Holy Spirit, can build for you great weapons if you know how to utilize that laboratory of sexual alchemy. Fortunately, people ignore this. In the Middle Ages, they were looking for that laboratory and for the philosophical stone, which is precisely the mystery of sex. And they were looking everywhere and they were carrying it every time with them. And that's why many alchemists were always talking in a funny way. When you look everywhere, finally you discover that you always carry it. And this is precisely this. Because the sexual energy is the most powerful energy in the universe. So you don't need to look any place. It's there. What you need, if you are a male, you need a woman. You need to marry. Because that is the mystery of the perfect matrimony. And to follow the rules of alchemy, which are the Ten Commandments. Not to believe in them. To perform them inside of you. Every commandment is something that you have to follow inside. That's the rules. Many people believe in the Ten Commandments. As you know, they're reading now they blah, blah, blah about the Ten Commandments, but they don't know how to follow them because this is something that you perform in your sod. The two commandments were written in two stones. One stone is the stone of the woman, and the other stone is the stone of the man. This is what Moses taught. The two stones where the Ten Commandments were written are simply the two stones of Yasad. When you enter into the mysteries of uh, masonry, the first thing that you enter into the temple, any mason temple, is a rustic stone, a rough stone, between two columns. The two columns, Joaquin Boaz, the woman and the, and the man. That's Joaquin Boaz. They had to salute those two columns. But in the middle of those two columns is a rough stone. That rough stone symbolizes the way in which we are right now. Sexually speaking, it's rough. We are pure animals. To chisel that stone and make it perfect cubic form with the hammer and the chisel is what you call willpower. So we have to work with willpower until we make that, of that stone that is rough, perfect cubic form. But that hammer, of course, is a symbol of willpower. Because this is the only thing that we need. is willpower. Because the energy that will build for you what you need, which is the solar astral body, mental solar body, and causal solar body, which is called the Merkava, or Tosoma Heliacon, or the Sahu, the Egyptian Sahu, in order to enter into the world of the gods, all that matter, all, all that energy that you need in order to create that is in the sex, and you need willpower. Why? As Nietzsche says, in Das Spock Zaratustra, Nietzsche. Nietzsche says, are you visiting women? Don't forget your whip. Of course. Are you going to perform the sexual act with your wife? Don't forget your whip. Because that whip is willpower. You see, there are symbols in the, in the Gospels where Jesus is being whipped in the back. That's precisely the efforts that the alchemist does when he's in the sexual act in order to transmute the sexual energy and not spill, not reach the orgasm, to dominate in the beast, the donkey, because what he wants is to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem. 
wearing the wedding garment. And that's precisely the mystery. Willpower is the only thing, thing that we need. You came here because of your will. Whatever you do, you need will. What you need is just to change the will in order to command the forces of Hades. Fornication, lust, is strong in every one of us. And Hades knows that that's his power in order to pull the souls into his kingdom. But we need to go out of Hades. We want to go into Olympus. And Hades says, okay, do it. But defeat me first. You want to leave my kingdom? I will put every single element servant of mine in your disposal. You have to defeat. You have to fight. You defeat them, you are free. This is how all the great heroes enter there and fight. But the entrance is inside. It's inside your subconsciousness. Unconsciousness. This is how you enter. And then to fight. And the key is willpower. That's why we said our motto is telema. Willpower. Because in the very sexual act you need willpower in order to, to transmute the sexual energy. In order not to reach the orgasm or the spasm. And that implies a lot of will. That's why the weak those that have no strong will cannot succeed in this path. To be born again is a matter of willpower. It's a matter of manipulating, handling the sexual energy in order to create for us superior bodies. And that's the mystery of to be born again. That's the mystery of transmuting the water into wine. As Jesus performed that in the wedding of Cana, the six vessels are the symbol of the lover in Kabbalah. That you need to decide and you use willpower in order to transmute all your water into the wine of the Spirit. Because remember that the wine is a symbol of the Eucharist. And when you receive the body of Christ, so that body of Christ has to, have to run, to flow inside your belly. And for that, you have to transmute the waters into wine. That's a miracle that only the wife and the husband can perform in the weddings of Cana. That's the first miracle that Jesus performed because this is the first thing that we have to perform. And this is how we enter into the mysteries or mayor mysteries. And this is how we, little by little, start living internally the Gospels or the mysteries of the cross which are written in the New Gospel. So that's why you find that in Scorpio is the other great magician of practical magic, which is Samael. Samael is that uh, archangel that rules Arius and Scorpio. It's fire. In a Scorpio, you find that uh, some symbols, you find the the knight fighting against the dragon. And the knight is always holding the spear in order to kill the dragon. Well, that's a great work that the warrior had to perform in a Scorpio because the practice of a Scorpio, esoteric practice of a Scorpio, is sexual magic, is transmutation. Pranayama, the lance of that knight, the spear, the symbol of the masculine 
force, which is telema, in which we utilize the sexual energy with the we transmute in order to kill the dragon. Do not commit the mistake of thinking that only we, the man, the male, have the spear. Of course, physically speaking, the spear symbolizes the phallus. But the woman also has the spear, which is precisely that masculine transmutation. Because when you develop, transmute the energy, you receive the lungs, the spear. And in order to comprehend this, let us remind or remember, I mean, Joan of Arc, that great knight female who develops all the powers and the land. The Athena, Athena also, Athena, the great warrior that had spear. And it's because the feminine and masculine forces are either in men or in women. The great Valkyrias. The Valkyrias, yeah, the Valkyrias, you know. The, if you ever uh, saw the Ring of the Nibelungen, this great opera of Wagner, you find there how the Valkyrias, the great uh, Amazons, are described. Which is the feminine aspect. We use the spear. Uh, which is precisely the, the masculine force of Samael. Because when you develop and you start working, you enter into the kingdom of Samael. Samael, precisely, which is the one that kills the dragon, that defeats the dragon inside of you. Samael is a sexual force in Scorpio. Of course, we have to understand that the seven spirits before the throne of God that the book of Revelation talks about are above there in the superior dimensions. They are archangels or logoi, divine forces. But all those spirit forces are in each one of us, in potency. We have all the seven forces of the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits before the throne of God in us. And say, for instance, that Samael is the fifth, because he's in relation with the fifth center, the sexual center. And that's why he is in Scorpio. He is the one that delivers the weapons in the sexual act to those that know how to defeat. It says there that Samael is the god of the blind. Because in the beginning when we start, we are blind. But little by little we receive the sight. Because that energy is what gives us the internal sight that we need to in order to see all of these things all of these mysteries and uh, the dragon of course is Lucifer it's another another name that we have to explain now because it has many attributes many symbols here we are talking about Lucifer which is the sexual strength the sexual power that anybody has it's called Lucifer Lucifer means light bearer, the carrier of the light. But in Klipoth, in the kingdom of Hades, in black magic, there is a demon whose name is Lucifer. This is something similar to that that we were explaining the other time. The Tetragrammaton, the sacred name of God, is Yod, He, Vav, He. And those four letters, with those four letters, you also write a name of a demon, whose name is Jave. With many demons in this physical world have intentionally mistake or confused with Jehovah. In order to write Jehovah in Hebrew with Kabbalistic letters, you, have, you write with Yod He Bab He. In order to write Jave, you write Yod He Bab He. But one thing is Jave. Jave is a demon. In Jehovah, is different. It's is a superior entity of the superior sephira. But in many Bibles, you find the word Yahweh instead of Jehovah. And that's very bad. That's precisely very sneaky uh, things that the black magicians did in order to confuse humanity. 
y de pronuncia Yahweh, ya, yeah, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, ya, yeah, for the Yod, Yahweh, 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 many, many ways, but that's not the name of God. The Yod Hevahe means pronounced Yahovah, or Yod Hava, Kabbalistically speaking. Yod Hava, that's the right pronunciation. Yahweh, or Yahweh, or many other uh, appellations, is just naming a demon from Klipoth. As well in this case, Lucifer is an aspect, individual aspect of each one of us, represents the sexual potency. The fallen Lucifer is Satan in us, the devil, which is all the difference that we have. So there are many fallen Lucifers or Satans in the world as human beings. Everybody has that within. And this is precisely what we have to understand. Because sometimes, uh, the Master Samael on the Or talks against the Luciferian spirits, which are black magicians, which utilize the sexual force in a negative way. Because in the same way that we speak here about to be born again and to transmute the sexual energy in order to create the internal bodies, in the same way, in Yesod, which is the entrance to Hades, there are also the black magicians that they teach to humanity the way to enter and to become demons faster and to enter there. And they do it through the sex. But they teach Black Tantra. Because the wisdom of Yesod, the wisdom of Scorpio, is Tantra. Sexual Tantra. But why Tantra is what we explain already. The way in which husband and wife transmute the sexual energy and accomplish with the Ten Commandments. Follow the rules in order to be born again. Black Tantra is different. It's where you enjoy of sex and degenerate and develop the Kunda buffer organ, which is the tail of Satan. And then you become an inhabitant of the world of Hades, a slave of Hades, a slave of Pluto. So you see, whether you defeat Hades, Pluto, or you become a slave of Pluto, Hades. And those black magicians, they don't create the internal bodies. They just fall into hell by practicing sexual magic in a negative way and develop powers here in Klippoth. And since this Malkuth, the physical world, is a falling Sephira, they exercise a lot of power in Malkut because the physical body that we have is a fallen sephira. It's an outcome of fornication. We are not immaculate con uh, conception. We came from immaculate conception. We came from fornication, all of us. So therefore, the secret enemy, which practices sexual magic negatively, has power in Malkut. It's called the Black Lodge. They are the ones that are spreading pornography. They are the ones that are spreading a lot of degeneration in the sexual act in order to bring all the soul down. Because they know that the only way to go out is by being chast chaste, the practice chastity. And that's why it is not rare that many people are angry with us because we are teaching chastity, sexual transmutation which are against the rules of hell. Fornication, adultery, sexual degeneration is something normal in hell. But to teach this that we are teaching here in hell is something abnormal. Yeah, because it belongs to the superior dimensions. But if you want to leave hell, you have to do it. That's the only way to experience that which is written in many religions about the great masters, angels. Did you hear about angels? If you any, uh, belong to any religion, you over, always read about uh, divas, angels, wheat beans. But you never experience that. But if I ask you, did you ever experience a nightmare? All of you will raise your hand and say, yeah. yeah. Nightmares are related to Klippos. Because we have the elements there. But in order to experience, to have a contact with an angel... Superior beings, well, 
We have to change. We have to transform. Because nothing, nothing is given to us for free. We have to fight for it. And the only element that we have to use in order to fight, in order to conquer that, is willpower. That's what we need in order to enter into the doors of Eden. Into the doors of initiation. We have to reach the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth initiation of major mysteries. And if we want to go ahead into the level of the superman, because when you reach the five initiations of major mysteries, you have the right to be called human being. Because with the fifth initiation, you create the causal body. With the fourth, you find the mental solar body. A body that gives you reasoning, but superior reasoning. Not the reasoning that we use here. And with the astral body, you have a body from, with uh, superior emotions. So when you have those bodies inside of you, solar, immortal, no mechanical, what everybody has, then you have the right to be called human being. And then in the internal plane says, behold man. You see? Behold the man. Behold. Ecce homo. And the symbol of the causal body, the superior body, above the mental body, is the crown of thorns. That's why when Jesus reached that level, appears in front of the multitudes. He's already a human being. And Pilate, which symbolizes the subjective reasoning, the intellectual animal mind, says, actually homo, behold the superior mind, the superior man, the superior manas, because he is the inferior. And of course, Jesus there is ready as a man to walk the path of the superior man, the superman. And for that, he takes his cross and go again to the Calvary, to the month of Golgotha. That's the way of the superman. Nietzsche committed a mistake when he wrote his Zarathustra. He thought that all the population of the earth were made of human beings. He was wrong. All the population of the earth is made of intellectual animals. But human beings, we have to call Diogenes. He says, please, look for us, a human being. And Diogenes will come to New York, will go to many cities of the world, and Diogenes will say, well, I didn't find it yet. Because it's difficult to find a human being with solar bodies. Those human beings are the ones that are prepared in order to enter into the kingdom of the superman. And for those are precisely the greater mysteries of Eleusis, in which they have to descend again into the kingdom of Pluto, but a very higher octave. Because then they discover, oh, Pluto is not only related with the hells of the earth, it's also related with the hell of all of the planets above. And we have to enter now in the hell of Mercury, in the hell of Venus, in the hell of the other planets, in order to gain access to the level of Superman. That is what is called as a resurrection in different levels. Nine, it's called the Enneagram. There is a book there called the Enneagram, written by somebody else. That book has nothing to do with this. The real Enneagram is for men that already are in the fifth initiation and wants to enter into the level of Superman. And they have to enter into each hell and to conquer the heaven of that planet. And like that, that's the Enneagram which is internal, profound. And that's the other aspect. When Pluto says, okay, you left the hell of the earth, but I still wait for you in other planets. Because Pluto, you know, is the planet that has the only planet that had that uh, orbit 
which is not like the other planets. It's a very rare orbit. The cir- circle about the, all the nine, because he is the ruler of all the infra dimensions, all the hells of the other planets. He has to be defeated first here in the earth. And if you want to follow the direct path, the path of the Bodhisattva, and then you have to defeat him again nine times. But many initiates, they said, one time is enough. And they prefer to enter into the spiral path. Only the brave ones, the courageous ones, say, no, I will defeat Pluto also in the other hells because I want to return into the basin of the absolute. They are very rare. But whether you enter into Nirvana or into the Absolute, you have to defeat Pluto. Hades. And he is not outside. He's inside. He's the intelligence which is mechanical, automatic in us. And we have to be cognizant of that. That's the path of the initiation. And of course, he's just talking in general ways here. And he's the wisdom of Scorpio. Samael. Is Talema that we need when we enter into the major mysteries. Do you have questions? Is the, the defeating of Pluto in the nine different hells, is that the same as the nine uh, mysteries, the minor mysteries? And the, the first step is to enter into the minor mysteries, nine minor mysteries. It's the first, in which you start defeating your awakening, we will say, and knowing about your own nature, little by little, until you reach the nine one. That's the beginning. But after that, you have to practice sexual magic. You can descend into the nine minor mysteries being a single bachelor, but only with chastity. I mean, without, you have to stop fornicating. That's why in ancient times, those monks or nuns that were prepared, that already passed the nine minor mysteries, were entering into the mysteries of sexual magic. Unfortunately, many monks of the Middle Ages and nuns forgot about. And they were just keeping their celibacy, and they were not practicing sexual transmutation as a bachelor, because you need to know the mysteries of pranayama. You have to, to manipulate. You have to handle the sexual energy. It's not just sexual abstinence. Hmm? But of course, if you are married, you have to learn how to transmute the sexual energy in the sexual act. And that gives you more energy in order to pass the nine minor mysteries very fast. While if you are a bachelor, you can also pass it, but very slow. We will say that the bachelor goes in a donkey and the married one goes in a jet. Yeah. Uh, what does AZF and Arcanum AZF stand for? What does it mean? Those are uh, Latin letters for aqua, uh, sulfur for fire, azot, and an F for fire or for hot are the two elements. But we need is water and fire in order to develop consciousness. A soft. Yeah. You said the initiate has to descend into the hells of other planets. Does this mean that we have egos there in the infernos of other words of other worlds and not just in our own? We have element we say for instance uh, related with the ego, with the protoplasmic bodies, are related with the mechanical forces of the moon, which are related with Yesod. The moon has two aspects, one visible and the other invisible. The visible, as you see here, for instance, every time we have full moon, we see the moon there, but we don't see the other side. The same way, we have defects that we clearly see. You will say, oh, I am very lustful. I am very anger, angry, I mean. 
proud. I have uh, greed in me. I have a lot of gluttony. A lot, uh, many, many defects, right? Which are easily to see. But the dark side of the moon, the other side, is precisely those elements that you don't see. And that you don't even imagine that you have. You might say, oh, I, I never take the money of anybody. I always like to be right. I, I don't like to steal. Those people that are really here in the physical world, you can leave, for instance, a million dollars there on the table, and they look and they walk away. They are always behaving. But in the dark side of the moon, of their psychology, there are elements of going to a bank with weapons and stealing the money of the bank. But they ignore about it. A woman, for instance, can be very chaste and very faithful to his husband. But in the dark side of, his, of her moon, she might have egos of prostitution that she ignores. And that's why this is very good because there is a certain place there, a lot of people that is identified or that are identified with witches and sorcerers. Anybody that enters there into their school is a sorcerer or is a witch. Well, everybody, listen to this, everybody is a witch, everybody is a sorcerer. It is enough for you to like this type of knowledge, for, for you to have that type of ego. Because in ancient times, you didn't find the Gnostic doctrine. You were looking for something mysterious, and unfortunately you found the Black Lodge teaching you black magic. So the Master Samael on the earth told to me directly, he says, it is very rare to find a Gnostic which has not that ego inside. So therefore, to accuse somebody that is a witch, that is a sorcerer, that's a very bad joke, or bad, very bad taste. Because everybody is a sorcerer, everybody is a witch. Those egos are within, you know. This is what we have to understand and comprehend. And while we point on others, other people are being sorcerers or witches, we forget that we have that within. We have to be, in this way, as we said, compassionate. And to see the evilness in the righteous and the goodness in the evil one, in the wicked. Yeah? You mentioned Nietzsche and thus spoke Zarathustra. Was he a Gnostic? Yeah, as Hitler was a Gnostic. And of course, you hear what? Yeah. Many in the past committed many mistakes. It's like, for instance, as we're saying here, we're accusing others of being witches or being sorcerers. That's what Hitler uh, uh, was doing in the ancient times or in the Second World War. Accusing others of being Zionists. We know about Zionism, but not all the Jews, not all the people of Israel are Zionists. They may have an organization with that name, but Hitler thought that all the Jews were Zionists. And there were, I mean, he was fighting against Zionism, but he didn't touch the heads. He just was against uh, people that were just workers of Europe. Women, children that didn't know anything about this. Right? So that's why precisely when we, found, we fall into mistakes, you know, the black lash exists. Sorcery exists, but they are not openly. We are open. Another question? Can you explain a little bit more? You, you talked about Hitler, but how is he, um, what happened with him? Well, how did he get um, onto the wrong path? Well, in the beginning, he was uh, uh, with the White Lodge, and he was working for Germany, for the good of Germany. If you st study the, the life of Hitler, you will see how in the beginning he was doing a lot of good for the Germans. But then, the, because he knew about this knowledge, somebody from Tibet, and this is something very important here, 
because we know the Dalai Lama is a great master, but not all the people from Tibet are white. In Tibet, there is a black lodge, a clan that practice, practice black magic. So that clan sent a messenger to Hitler. But Hitler knew about the Second Order of Tibet. And that black magician, who was an imposter, passes as a, as a white. And he starts teaching Hitler black magic. And advising him in the wrong way. So Hitler, this is how he started deviating from the white path. And at the end, he was working for the Black Lodge, not for the white. And he gained a lot of karma, of course, because uh, this black magician was deviating him and telling him lies and all the actions that he took in that time in Europe were wrong. And anyone can pass for that too. If we start judging everybody as being black, well, everybody's black in this, in this world. I only know uh, uh, a white master in Christianity. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. Or maybe uh, St. Francis of Assisi, a great master. But the rest, we're black. We are not here, of course, uh, uh, how you call playing white. We are black too. But we are fighting, in order, we are fighting against Pluto. And we invite you to fight against your own Pluto, your own negative forces. But we are not going to play that we are angels. Angels are above, and we are here below. This is precisely the right thing to, to, to understand this. We are here below, and below we are all cut with the same scissors. We have to fight. And whatever we conquer inside, we have to keep silence. Not to talk about, because that's secret, that's sacred. That belongs to God, not to us. What is Zionism? Zionism is a group of black magicians that were working against Moses in the time of Moses. And they betrayed Moses. And they keep planning that in order to conquer uh, uh, through their way uh, their humanity, the world, whatever. There are many movements, repeat, there are many movements called Zionists in this day and age. But the real ones are not public. The ones that you find that are called Zionists or whatever, Zionism, there are many here in America, in Europe, in many places. They are not related to this which we are talking here. The real Zionists are in secrecy, doing their work in secrecy. And they are not so stupid in order to go in the public, but they know how to manipulate the public. Yeah? I'm not sure if this is a good question. The nine steps, the, the lesser steps, I mean, is there kind of an outline of what that involves? The nine steps are related with the nine spheres uh, of uh, Klippat. Well, there are many egos related with each sphere. Of course, in each sphere, some psychological aspect of us results. But which one is? Only you can answer that by descending into the lesser mysteries. Because each one of us is different. It is, that's why it's, too bad, it's very bad to generalize. To say, oh yeah, the ego of this sphere is related. Yeah, we, we can say some examples as Dante explains some examples in each sphere. But really, we have to discover that for our own, because we have to know ourselves. Men know thyself, and you will know the universe. So in the nine lesser mysteries, you descend, and you know little by little all your psychological aspects related with Pluto, related with Hades. But remember, there are forces there that can cheat you easily, because they are inside of you. Great initiatives were deviated by those forces in the past. Hitler was deviated. Napoleon in the beginning was working very good too. And Napoleon at the end was declaring himself emperor. He was betraying the White Lodge. You see? 
So there are many great uh, uh, writers, philosophers that really were working in a very right way, but the forces of Pluto, the dark forces, were manipulating them in the end. This is the path of the races age. That's why in order to enter into this path, you have to know a lot of good and evil. The good within the evil and the evil within the good in order to know how to work and not to get stagnant and to commit uh, stupidities like Hitler. He was walking in the first, in the beginning, was working good. Suddenly, he gained a lot of karma for all that that he did in the Second World War. Now he has to answer in the future about that because that soul is still there but is in jail. It's not free. Like many other uh, perpetrators of that word. So we are really in the times of the end. And the White Lodge is doing super efforts in order to pull the souls out of the kingdom of, of Hades. But a lot of people are identified with Hades. They love Hades. They love hell. They sing to hell. You know that. So it's up to you. Use your willpower. And then Hades, I want to be your friend. But you are my enemy. I know that. You know? It is inside of you. It's not outside. It's inside. Don't worry. That's why Master Jesus says, don't worry about the how do you call that in the eye of your brother? Splinter. The what? Splinter. The splinter in the eye of your brother. Don't worry about that. Worry about the trunk that you have in your eye. Hmm? That's precisely. If you walk in your trunk, you're good. But if you start uh, we worry about, oh, uh, my, the brother is such and such, the sister is such and such, look what they're doing. Let them alone. Let them do whatever they want. The work is inside of you. It's a civilization of yourself, not of other people. And the ego tends to do that, to judge, unfortunately. We need to know the dangers, and that's why the Master Samael Omveo wrote about many dangers. There in the internet, in the website, you find a initiatic preparation that we're placing there in order for you to know what the Master wrote in order to warn us about the dangers to anyone that wants to follow the path. Yeah? Uh, you said in 1919 the White Lodge decided to kind of let these mysteries out? Yeah, in 1919, uh, well, that was the date, according to their, our time, when the White Lodge opened the doors again of the superior worlds in order to start helping people to enter into the superior worlds. How is what? How is it known that that was opened in 1918? Well, it's known by the masters that are walk, of course. Because in this physical world, uh, there's nothing that you can't uh, have in order to prove it. Uh, you have to awake in order to know what date was, which coincides with the moment in which the white lot opened the door and says, okay, before this humanity reaches the end, we need to help the soul that want to return into the light. And uh, that date was 1919. Since that time, uh, we started teaching this little by little, and it's everywhere now. But believe me, not only the White Lodge is working, also the Black Lodge. As much light we give, the darkness becomes more thick. And, uh, to be, end with this, let me tell you a story. Master Samael Onveo wrote his first book called The Perfect Matrimony. And all the Black Lodge was angry against him because he was unveiling and teaching these mysteries to all the world, openly. And then the Black Magicians told him, we are going to work against that book. You will see. So in the physical world, he was waiting for another book that will reject in, against his book. And he kept writing other books and never found a book talking against his writings. Finally, he discovered 
that the Black Lodge was not writing any book. What the Black Lodge was doing is promoting pornography. That was the work against it. And now, it's very spread. So that, let you see how, how the two lodges work. It's too easy to enter into hell. The door is very, bra- very broad. You enter there, but the door into superior dimensions is chastity. Ain't nobody like that. No ego. Is it? No more questions? Thank you very much. And Sagittarius, wait for us. Gnostic Radio is made possible through the financial support of listeners like you. To make a tax-deductible donation, visit our website at GnosticTeachings.org. For questions about this or other lectures, we invite you to participate in the free discussion forum at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you for your support. May all beings be happy.